I hope you're ready for this video because I'm going to share with you five things I always do in my Cubase setup. Things that improves my workflow when producing, recording, mixing, mastering music. And to be honest with you, I think you should do the same with your Cubase setup. Let's have a look. One of the first thing that is part of my Cubase setup are specific commands that I often use that I assign to a specific keyboard shortcut. And they are not assigned to anything by default. Okay, so I need to assign them manually. The first one is the export audio mix down window when I'm ready to bounce a mix. So I assign this one to the letter K on my computer keyboard, and that gives me access to the export audio mix down very quickly. So this is very useful as far as I'm concerned anyways. Uh, the second one is bounce audio uh, that I use so often when editing and also in the mixing session, uh, especially when I'm done uh, doing some pitch correction with very audio. I like to commit when I'm done pitch correcting and uh, by selecting all those events, I can simply click on my keyboard shortcut, which in my case is the letter Y, and this is gonna activate bounce selection. I'm gonna click on replace and there you go. Now those audio events were bounced in place, okay? And this is instead of going up to audio, and bounce selection, okay? Now the next one is in a recording situation. So if I go uh, in the uh, Cubase uh, preferences at the bottom under VST, there's the auto monitoring, okay? Which is gonna give me the choice between different um, auto monitoring recording modes, uh, which goes from manual to while record enabled, while record running and tape machine style. And this is mainly used when recording. And I often switch between tape machine style and manual sometimes uh, while record enabled. Uh, but instead of going back to the preferences all the time I need to switch, I assign the auto monitoring to a keyboard shortcut. And in my case, uh, it is the one right to the left of the one key right here. When I click on this one, it's gonna switch from one monitoring selection to the other, which is very practical. So let's say I wanna do some vocal overdubs on this track while using direct monitoring. I'm gonna use the tape machine for auto monitoring. Uh, so in this case, I'm just gonna go and uh, select tape machine style. And the minute I activate record enable on the channel, I'm gonna see the monitor icon lining up. Okay, so that means I'm in direct monitoring mode right away. So the tape machine style is actually pretty cool because when I click on play, it's going to deactivate automatically direct monitoring and it will only activate direct monitoring when I press on record. So this is a perfect monitoring mode when recording overdubs. And for the most part, I'm going to keep that to manual and I'm good to go. So this is a very fast way to switch from one monitoring mode to the other. I actually made a video on some Cubase recording tricks and tips, so I'm gonna leave the link in the video description. Now, something else that I have set up in my Cubase setup is the color set. Okay, and this is actually pretty cool, and I made a few videos on that before, uh, but it's mainly uh, the color set I use for my sessions. And I kind of like to color grade and color code my tracks according to the instrument. Uh, for example, all my drums are in blue, uh, my group channels are in green, um, I have all of my electric guitars in orange, also, my lead vocals are in yellow, so on and so forth. All of my uh, main instrument buses are in um, dark charcoal black, okay? And my main outputs are gonna be in red. My main color set can be found on top of the project window. Now, you can actually steal that color set from if you want to. I'm going to leave the link right below and that will make you download just a Cubase CPR file which is going to open an empty Cubase session where the color code is going to be applied, okay? And this is how the color code is going to look like, okay? And from this point, what you need to do is just to go under project, down to project color setup, and then options, 
and make sure you save this color set as default. So from this point on, all future new Cubase projects will have this color code applied. And if you open an older project where this color code is not applied, you can actually convert it to this color code as long as this color code is saved as the default color code. And from this point, the only thing you'll need to do is to go back into the same project color setup window and just click on reset color set to default inside a project that doesn't have that color code, okay? and it will replace the colors, and that's it. And I'm gonna stay around the color coding of my session by going to the Cubase preferences and under user interface, go down to track and mix console channel. And this is where I'll be able to tweak a few things when it comes to the intensity of the colors. Uh, so for example, the strength of the color I can actually adjust. There you go, now they are a bit more bright. I can also colorize the tracks and the mix console channels. So I think by default, the project window is gonna look like this. So the color set is gonna be applied only at the bottom of uh, the channels or on the side from the project window. So if I go back again into preferences and down to track and mix console channel colors, I'm just gonna need to activate tracks and mix console channels and folder tracks if I want to, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. And there you go. Now everything is applied on the full channels, which is pretty cool. It actually looks great. So this is the color code that I use, and I always set that up into a Cubase uh, setup. You know, if I'm installing a new Cubase setup on a new computer, this is the kind of stuff I'm gonna work with right away. And that will also work if you're using Nuendo. I'm gonna go back into the Cubase preferences, and this time around, I'm gonna go under metering. I'm gonna click on appearance, and there you go. I changed the colors of my channel meters, and I did that on purpose. And this is only to give me an idea in which range, as far as the level goes, I'm in when I record and mix music. So I keep the default scale and I just change the colors. So I made the first uh, color change at minus 18 uh, dBFS and another gradual uh, color change starting at minus 12 and that goes up to minus six. And when I do some recording, I'm gonna make sure I'm not going under the minus 18 point and I stay within the green, yellow, orange, range, which is going to keep my signal uh, between minus 18 and at the max minus 6 dBFS, only on peaks. But at least I have a good visual on the uh, levels I'm at when recording. And this is how I was able to uh, tweak that up. It's very simple. If you want to, uh, uh, to add some colors, you click on add and then just double click on the color and you can select the color you want. All right. Very, very simple. So I'm just going to remove that. And something very cool on top of that. I like to use uh, Supervision as uh, one of my graphic analyzers. And when I use one of the meters in Supervision, which is the same meter as I have on my channel, I can actually apply that color code inside Supervision. So I'm going to select this meter, click into the meter settings. And down, instead of clicking on track, I'm going to make sure I select scale. Okay, and I'm using the same uh, digital uh, metering as I have on my channels. And that is actually very, very cool. So I kind of like that a lot. And talking about the Cubase preferences, there's some settings in there that I also change in my Cubase setup. So if you want me to make a video on this one, let me know down below. Just a quick shout out to Steinberg celebrating their 40th anniversary. And to celebrate, they are jumping into a mega sale. So that means 50% off full versions, updates, upgrades, and that until September 25th. And on top of that, up to 75% discounts for loyal customers on some Steinberg products. So that is your chance if you want to upgrade your Cubase to the latest one or jump straight into the pro version of Cubase 13 and enjoy lots of the features I'm actually talking about in this video. Now, this is not even a sponsored video. I've been a Steinberg fanboy for more than 20 years working with Cubase. But I do have an affiliate link down below that will lead you to this mega sale at no extra cost to you. So this way you can enjoy 
this amazing mega cell by also supporting this channel. So thank you in advance and enjoy. All right, let's get back to the video. And the next feature I use a lot uh, in my Cubase setup is the Cubase control room found on the pro version of Cubase. So by opening the audio connections window, by clicking on F4, uh, there's the control room tab that I'm gonna select. So if you're not using it yet and you use Cubase Pro, you need to use the control room. It has so many cool features and it does improve my workflow when mixing, mastering, and also recording. It's just a must if you're using Cubase Pro. And if you're not using the control room, you are missing a lot, trust me. So you activate it and you make sure that on the output tab, you only have one master output and make sure it's set up to not connected, okay? And by clicking on the control room, you'll have access to different channels. And the first one you wanna create is a monitor channel like I have right here. And this is where I'm gonna route my main outputs from my sound interface, which in my case is output one and two, which is probably the case for most people, okay? And this is where my audio is gonna come out of Cubase to my audio interface. And on the right zone of Cubase, whether you're working in the project window or the mix console, you will have access to the control room inside the right zone. And there's so many things you can do in there. I made a specific video that I'm gonna link down below if you wanna watch uh, what you can do with the control room in way more detail. But one of the things that I like to use it for is to uh, add my monitoring type plugins like supervision, for example. So I add it up as an insert on my main output out of the control room. Uh, same for my uh, tonal balance control by uh, um, Isotope and my session wire sand. I actually made a video on this one before. And if I was to uh, to work with uh, Sonarworks, for example, this would be a very good place to insert this type of plugin because uh, this will not affect your mix per se. So if you bounce your mix, those plugins are not gonna affect your bounce, basically, okay? Opposed to if you, I was to insert those plugins straight on my master output. Now, a plugin like Supervision will not affect your sound whatsoever, uh, but a plugin like uh, Sound ID uh, by uh, Sonarworks will, okay? So this is the type of plugins that you would need to bypass if they are inserted on a master bus output opposed to the control room where you don't need to bypass them, it will not be bounced with your mix, okay? So this is a huge advantage on using the control room. And one more thing that I like to do inside the control room is to set up the listen uh, mode right here, which is available on Cubase Pro. So for example, um, let's say I want to monitor the guitar delay, okay? But I just wanna monitor the delay itself without the incoming signal, okay? I'm gonna click on L and L will actually activate the listen mode. And the listen mode is gonna be managed inside the uh, control room by activating enable listen, okay? So that will activate it and I make sure that AFL is also selected. And then there's the listen dim that I'm gonna to bring to infinity. So everything else inside the session will be muted to the exception of the channel or channels where listen is on. So for example, if I was to um, listen to this delay and I click on solo, I would listen to the effect of this effects channel track, but also uh, what is coming into the channel, like the dry signal of those guitars. But if instead I decide to monitor the effect only, I'm gonna select L for listen. And there you go. Now I don't have any more direct signal, so I'm only hearing the audio coming out of this effects channel nothing else, okay? So this is a pretty cool way to monitor that channel on its own. And that works also for audio channels and group channels also. So it's pretty practical, especially when mixing. Now let me give you a bonus thing since we're still in the control room 
And actually, if you don't have Cubase Pro at this point, you're probably gonna start to be tempted to put your hands on the Pro version of Cubase. If you've been watching this channel a lot, you know my drill when it comes to referencing music when mixing. Uh, I have that set up straight from the control room. I don't use any uh, monitoring type plugins to use with mix references. I set that up straight into the control room on a Q channel. Q channels are amazing to set up some mixes when recording, but when mixing, I use a Q mix in a different way. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the audio connections control room and I'm gonna make sure I have a Q uh, created. So Q1 is created and it's going nowhere, okay? So I make sure the output of that Q is going to not connect it. And on the left side, I have my reference mix channel. And if I go back here in the project window, it's right on top. And the output of this track is going to nowhere, no bus but I send a signal to the Q send one, which is gonna land right here. Okay, now I just inserted one track on this channel. And if I switch between mix, which is what we are currently listening to, to C1, which is Q1, now I'm gonna land on my reference track and I can switch from one to the other. So this is basically how I use it. And the cool thing with this technique is I can use this reference channel to route the output of my Amazon Music streaming service straight into Cubase to use as mix references, which is awesome. I actually made a full video where I show you how I can route the output of a streaming service app right inside Cubase by using a very cool free plugin called Session Wire. So if you wanna watch this video, make sure you click right here on top. And I'm actually very curious on what you do on your Cubase setup. What settings do you like to change? What features you like to use? List me everything down below. Okay, friend, I'll see you around.